Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world uh, you join us from. Um, thanks for making the time to join us for this short 30 minute bite sized session today. Um, what we're going to be looking at is uh, how we use digital workers with a lot of our clients within the travel, leisure and hospitality industry. What we're trying to do is improve efficiency but also enable their growth goals um, and use digital workers uh, as a way of them doing that. Um, I'm going to go um, on mute after this, but if you do have any questions throughout the webinar, please put them in the chat box below and we'll get to those at the end. Um, talking today, we're going to have uh, Anish Gupta, who is the Managing Director of Centelli, but he's also the person that um, is in charge of uh, our solutions for the hospitality industry, making sure that we're able to help our clients meet their goals and hit their objectives. So uh, over to Anish now. Thanks, Sam. Um... Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for making the time, hopefully in the next half an hour or ideally in the next 20 minutes and we leave 10 minutes at the end for Q&A. In 20 minutes, I'm hoping to show you some of the work we've done and where digital workers we feel are making a positive impact in the travel and leisure industry. So what do we see happening in travel and leisure as a general? industry there's a big focus on improving the guest experience it goes without saying that the guest is king the guest is the one that is what's driving the industry but the experience that they're getting is what is is fueling the industry and reputation social media each person has a voice it's very easy to be visible now and and any positive or negative experiences that guests have have an impact on business. So focusing on that, making sure that that experience is as positive as possible is where a lot of the focus needs, needs to be and needs to go. The ecosystem that is supporting the industry is extremely broad. The, the industry composes of lots of partnerships, lots of providers come together to enable everything from booking to property management to, uh, to physical hotel execution. And all of those have to work seamlessly for the experience to be good. Otherwise, it takes a lot more time and effort to join these pieces together. It's a competitive market. It's an extremely competitive market. Price visibility is extremely high. Prices are published. It's easy for leisure guests to compare what's going on. It's easy for corporate guests to compare what is on offer. And they can switch very easily. The the industry needs to be nimble. They need to be able to react quickly. They need to be able to see what's happening. And on top of that, end of the day, it is a business. We've got to scale profitably. On top of that, if anything last year has taught us, there's been new challenges around the corner. And if hiring and retaining staff wasn't a challenge, it's become even harder. You've got customers who are talking about having to shut down floors we've got because they can't get cleaning staff we've got customers struggling to keep staff motivated and and uh, motivated and engaged within contact centers because the work's extremely long hours and it's very demanding when you put all of this together the experience the industry is challenging on a number of fronts how do you operate a complex landscape provide a great guest experience remain competitive keep staff motivated and we still manage to increase profitability. And that's where we see digital workers fitting in. So we see digital workers being able to help out in a number of areas that are constraining or limiting what can happen in, uh, in achieving these goals. So where, where have we been deploying digital workers so far? Our customers, we've been doing a lot of reservations. So just managing reservations, everything from entering reservations, canceling, to checking and making sure that it's correct. It's work that trained staff have been doing and they've been struggling to keep up because the volume's high, which is great because it means good business, but end of the day, it's being done by staff. Now, yes, we've automated a lot of that through channel managers and it comes in easily into PMS, but there's a lot that's not in channel managers. And we'll talk about some of the some of the providers we work with, which tend to just work over email, and then there's reservation staff that's entering all of that email in. Response times have, 
are impacted when staff are doing it because we don't want to work the staff 24 7 but customers do work 24 7 because websites are working 24 7 so you get bookings all time at times of the day staff come in in the morning they come into an inbox that's filled up and they spend the entire day just trying to keep in uh, keep on top of that inbox we do work like rate allocation so how do you take rates and make sure that you can update the rates one of our customers has 12,000 rates and when they need to adjust the rates it takes a lot of effort to make sure that those rates are competitive and are what the the uh, what the organization feels is is a good rate to be profitable yet attract customers We'd like to make sure our cash flow is good. So trying to get deposits in on time from customers through the various payment methods that might exist, again, takes time and effort. So digital workers are, are like human workers. What digital workers do is they take the task of, they take the task that is currently being done by humans and digitize it. It's done exactly the way a person would do. And that's the reason why we're extremely flexible and quick in making these implementations. Who are Centelli and what is our background? We're, uh, we're, we were founded in 2014 with operations in Europe, US, and India. We're 75 global, uh, we're 75 employees globally, and hospitality has been a big focus for us. We've got a few really good customers. Customers are quite proud to be working with, and we quite enjoy working with them, some long term relationships. And for them, we've been delivering solutions with digital workers that have. That have done most of the stuff that I've been talking to you about so far. And I'll talk about a particular case study um, on the next slide. We are outcome driven. What does that mean? What does it mean for you? It means that we like to say we're going to deliver some result. And if we say we will deliver it, we don't stop until we have delivered it. Sometimes it's commercially not the best for us, but you know what? In the long term relationship, if we've made a mistake in understanding the industry, we'll happily take it on the chin. Notable customers, GLH hotels, great properties, amazing locations within London. Village hotels, a very boutique, previously known as the DVO Group. Uh, some amazing properties, a very unique way of working, extremely innovative. Soho House, global known brand. We do quite a lot of work with them. And off late, we've signed up with Judy Zinn as well. And again, with Judy Zinn, we're doing quite a bit of work that we've been taught, that I've been talking to you about. In all these customers, we've been delivering digital workers across a number of different parts of the business. And, and we have seen great impact. The best part has been the employee experience, which is what we see and interact with directly. But we know for a fact that we've cut down on cycle times. In one particular case, the, the contact center staff was about a week behind and in keeping on top of one particular provider. And after the digital work was deployed, the entire process of managing reservations from that provider is running at a lag of now 11 minutes. So we've gone from seven days to 11 minutes purely by deploying just one single digital worker. The technologies we work with, we uh, we work with a solution called UiPath, which is a leader within the RPA space. RPA is what is actually uh, is it is the underpinning solution, and we like to position digital workers because that's how we see them fitting into a business. They fit in exactly the way a person would. So we say, number one, ask yourself, in a perfect world, is this something you would like to be doing? And if the answer is no. It's a great candidate for digital workers. The reason we call them digital workers is because they replicate the task that a person would be doing just like a person would do. They don't need any change to IT systems. They access applications just like a person would. They execute rules just like a person would. They do it 24 seven without making any mistakes. So you get the benefit of digitization and you get the benefit of the worker just like you would have within your, with just like you would hire a new employee. We work with uh, Infor and we work with Infor HMS. We work with Infor's BI tool as well. And we're also an Oracle validated uh, integration partner. We've got our own solutions with Oracle. So we're able to take 
digital workers to the next level and we're able to operate work with opera a lot more efficiently than what we work with some of the other pmss and when working with opera in our experience all that efficiency does help because it means we can do things faster so what is what are digital workers what is rpa Robotic process automation is what the industry calls it. We have different names for it. We call it routine processes annihilated. We call it a digital workforce. And the experience, what we're trying to do is we're trying to do better guest experience. The reason we're doing better guest experience is directly by improving response times, but we're also doing indirectly by freeing up trained experienced staff to actually interact with the customers. Is RPA, our digital workers, the right answer for everything everything that happens within the industry the answer is no the right answer is that they are good for routine tasks they're good for high volume transactional tasks that are necessarily working with the guest where the guest needs interaction for example where should i go to in the evening for a dinner with my with my partner to go to celebrate our anniversary that kind of response is much better served by a staff member who can look at what the history of the guest is, decide what to make recommendations, check availability, and provide it. We do scalability. So if you're running a promotion and all of a sudden you're expecting high volume from a particular provider because of the promotion you're about to run, scaling staff to be able to handle that is difficult. The benefit of having digital or digital workforce is scalability is on tap. So if you have one digital worker doing a task and you need two, it's about 15 minutes and they can replicate exactly the same task and just scale up. And two is not a limit. You could have 2,000 if you ever needed to. Improved employee experience, absolutely paramount. Helps in motivating staff, helps in retaining staff. One of our customers, after we had deployed the solution, came back and said, my staff like to grab a popcorn as a joke and watch the digital worker executing the work. But jokes aside, he said, our productivity has gone up. We've been able to generate more revenue because my current team is now engaging with a the customer. They didn't cut down any staff. They used the benefit of the solution to actually go back and reinvest, improve guest experience, improve, improve revenue. It fits in with an ecosystem. When we're working with the hotels, we realize that the landscape is complex. There are no two organizations which have the same footprint of computing applications. So how can you take a solution that can fit in everywhere? Well, that's the benefit of what we're proposing. The way RPA with UiPath works is it works at the user interface layer. And all it's doing is it's accessing the applications just like a person would. And last but not least, which, uh, which is a benefit, um, is reduced costs. Because the workers cost less, they work 24 seven, our estimate is they put the throughput, one digital worker can put the throughput of about 15 human workers. They work about five times faster, three times longer, which gives us that multiplier. And because they're working 24-7, you're getting, you're getting response times, which you would not get with the traditional workforce. So where, do, where, could, where could the solution possibly fit in? So if you look across this uh, value chain of, uh, of travel and leisure, there are a number of areas that, could, that it could apply to, some areas where it's a better fit and some areas where are probably not the best fit. So if I take at a high level, something like general management, it's a lot about strategic planning. It's a lot about planning three months out. And there is there are no two quarters which are the same. There are no two weeks which are the same in the current world we live in. So probably not the best fit. But on the flip side, if we take work happening within finance, uh, whether it be supplier engagement, whether it be revenue management, whether it be commission checking or accounts payable, great fit. If you take HR, employee onboarding, employee offboarding, again, a great fit because staff is moving around and how do you make sure that you're providing the best experience while ensuring compliance? Digital workers can ensure that. IT technology projects, 
we've done rate my patients. We enabled our customer to go live with the rollout of a new PMS, a task that would have taken them. The, the forecast was that they had to double up this team in order to meet their goal of two properties per week. And that was just not feasible because of budgets. Once we had the solution in place, the entire rollout process went from two person weeks to four hours because it was automated and it worked at a much faster pace than a person could work. Apart from that, we've seen a number of areas. So everything from marketing and sales to booking, to guest services, to operations, to guest relationships. There's a great, there's a great example of, of where digital workers can come in and actually help take some of the load off your team and deliver efficiencies, deliver great, much better guest experience. What have we done? So over the period of almost three years that we've been working in this space, we've delivered a num we've delivered a large number of solutions across contact center, where we release 30% capacity, improvement in employee morale I've talked about, talked about IT project support. We are doing finance, so interfaces, reconciliation, supplier management, membership and leisure, human resources. Across all these areas, we've done, we're currently processing more than 20,000 emails a month. And these emails range from everything from creating new bookings to cancel new bookings to as simple a task as filing emails away to, to enable um, to enable traceability and auditability. We currently estimate we're saving about 2,000 person, 2,000 hours per annum. And it's an estimate because we, the work we're doing is, the new work we do has a very different way of measurement to the previous way. And the previous one did, does it, and sometimes it's difficult to measure. But most importantly, the work, the solutions we deploy get deployed on an average in about three weeks time, which means that it is, it is faster than the hiring cycle for a new employee. And once you have it deployed, you've got a process that is well documented as well as scalable and it operates 24 seven. So it's a great way of exploring new way of staffing your, uh, staffing your workforce. Over the course of, over the course of this, we've been working with a number of FITs so some of the FITs we work with, some of the OTAs we work with, and some of the corporates we work with so far. These were, um, last I think uh, this has gone up, we've added some more in. If you come to us and say that there's a new provider, how long does it take to add a new provider for us? It's probably a couple of days. Because the solution is quite flexible, it's able to go to extranets and extract data. It's able to read emails and extract data. It's able to take attachments and extract data. So for us, once we know what it is, where the where where the where the tailoring lies as to how you need it executed. And what we are finding is no two customers are the same because the systems they operate, the processes they operate are different. Okay. Hopefully that was a, a whistle stop tour of the um, of what we're doing within the industry. And um, it, it gives me great joy to say that we see real positive impact. We see where our customers are able to go free up resources to go focus on the guest and seeing the result of it on guest as well as on employee is um, is extremely satisfying. And then you know, we'd, uh, we'd love to share more details with you if you have any questions. Imagine, do we, shall we flip to questions then? Yeah, thank you, Anish. Um, everyone, uh, the best way to, to ask questions is to actually go to your question box uh, and type in the questions there. Uh, we do have one question so far, Anish. Uh, maybe you or Sam could answer this. Uh, the question okay. is- Thank you, Anish, for that. Much appreciated. Right, first question we've got is, uh, I guess a simplish one. It's uh, literally, how do you integrate uh, with our current IT applications? That's a, that's a good question. The, the way digital workers work, so we, we like to use the word workers because it's very similar to the way employees work. 
how would you work if you were to bring a new employee on? What you do is you'd give the employee a laptop or a desktop, so you give them a computer, you'd set them access to all your applications, and you tell them to say, here's our PMS, here's our channel manager, here's our property management system, or whatever other systems you use, and you say, if this happens, do that. That's exactly the same process for a digital worker. They don't use a laptop, it's a virtual machine. Of course, it could be a laptop as well. All they need is they need a simple Windows machine and they would have to be set up in the applications just like any new employee would. So you're creating a user for it. It is not a technical user, it's a business user. And we even create different users depending upon what the task needs to be for auditability purposes as well. They would then log into the application and they would execute the task exactly as per the rules. Think of it like an Excel macro, but not limited to Excel. So the way it works with the existing IT systems, just exactly the same way as it works with, as an employee would work with existing IT systems, they access it via the user, user interface. A digital worker is doing the keyboard mouse uh, movements, and, uh, sorry, mouse movements and keyboard clicks, just like a person. It's reading the screen just like a person. So no change to IT systems. It's just working with existing. IT involvement is actually quite minimal. We go through information security to make sure that you're comfortable. Because it's running on a laptop, a virtual laptop that's within your premises, nothing leaves your premises. Again, just like a, with a person. So information is secure, but we that's the process we go through. We just get infrastructure provisioned, and we make sure information security and user setup. But apart from that, just like a person. Thanks, Anish. <clears throat> Can you guys hear me? Perfect. Just gonna, if you mute yourself, Anish, I don't want everyone echoing. Perfect, thank you. Right, uh, next question is, um, which is actually quite a funny one because it's kind of a, a common complaint from a lot of our customers, is, is just, uh, just going to abbreviate. In short, they say uh, we're quite short on resources already. Um, what's our effort if we're going to use RPA or, or digital workers in our business? It's short on time. Nobody's ever short on time. Everybody has lots of times. No, I'm being flippant. Uh, the, we understand the industry quite well. So let's say you've got a provider and you say, we'd like you to be putting these, we'd like you to manage these reservations, whether it's a cancellation or an amendment or new booking into our PMS. We'd say, good, understood. We just need to know a few things. We need to understand how to use the rate codes, what special information you'd like captured, how you like your comments, et cetera. Half an hour is probably what it would need. Think of it as hiring a new staff member. How much time would you need to spend spend with a staff member to get them running on your system? What we do is we say, let's take a live example. We'll record the meeting. Once, once we know what needs to be done, we've got the information, we'll go off, get it ready, train the digital worker. We will execute the test and we'll come back and prove to you once we're comfortable that it's there. You are then welcome to go in and test it yourself. And once you're comfortable, once it's approved, we have the go. We, we have the green light to go ahead and deploy it, we'll deploy it into production. So your involvement, we try to keep it down as minimal as possible. We recognize that staff is already quite stretched and coming in and trying to ask for time when it's not available, doesn't work, it's unproductive, it stops us from delivering our outcomes that we promised we will deliver. So it, it's generally quite minimal. We Our customers do echo that as well. And if you ever need any confirmation, I'm sure we can put you in touch with any one of our customers to confirm that. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. I realized I was having a bit of my problem with audio, so I may be speaking over one of my colleagues in another, another part of the business. Apologies, Rajan, if you could hear me there. Um, one, another question that we've got here is, is it, effectively, is, is it an IT project or is it a business project to deploy digital workers? Yeah, the, the boundaries of uh, what is technology and the role technology plays is becoming increasingly blurred these days. Digital workers are really similar to hiring a person. 
if you're hiring a person, would you go to IT or HR and get them involved? Yes, you would get HR involved only to the extent of making sure you're doing the right sourcing locations and you're complying with regulations. That's what we're doing with IT as well. So we need to make sure we're complying with information security and any infrastructure IT policies that you have, because this is it is a piece of software. But in the end, it's actually embedded software. So it's software that is within the business. There is no IT needed to make changes to existing applications. Where the exact boundary will lie will vary organization to organization. But digital workers are where we have found success and <coughs> sorry, and faster successes where it is a business project. Because what we're executing is purely a business process. We're not looking at making changes to IT systems. And an evidence of that is the speed at which we can deploy. So our projects are three weeks because that's what it takes to train the worker. Once trained, then it keeps executing the process just like a person. There is, there is no change needed to any computing application. We don't need to, if API is available, yes, we can explore them and use them because it's faster. But if not available, then we can just use the uh, user interface. An example of this is Opera, where we do quite a lot of work and our certification comes in as well. There is functionality available through the APIs which which is not available or which is limits what can be done. So if you've got inventory and you need to do an overbooking, trying to make that through the APIs is actually quite complex, bordering on not possible. Whereas if you go through the UI, there's a little pop-up where a human can click override. So that's what we're able to do. And that's the reason why it's more of the way a business process needs to be executed rather than a piece of code being or software being developed. Two more questions. Uh, one more is, uh, can you work with other applications like POS systems, or does it have to just be um, property management systems and PMS? We're, we're not limited to any system because we're accessing these systems through the user interface. So actually in the background, whether it's a PMS or whether it's a website makes no difference. All we need to train the workers to say, go here, look for this field, based on this field, take certain actions or just take certain actions so there's a we've got a structure in which how we think about it but there is no there is no real application it is actually like a person it's a keyboard and mouse and it is locations within the on the computer screen that we're playing around with Perfect. I think the last question actually is kind of half answered by that one, but it's uh, just as simple as can can we help run reports for businesses if they're trying to collect their data from different places? Absolutely. And reporting is a great use case where pulling the information is not where the value lies. Analyzing the information is where the value lies. We've We've had great fun in trying to pull the information, make it available. We've even gone to the extent of saying, if you tell us what your base analysis is, will do we do the base analysis, send it off as an email. So it's available to you to, to run and extend. That report generation can happen on the back of collecting data from source systems, or it can happen on the use of any BI tool you're doing, and it can be converted the goal is to convert it into the easiest way that that you can use to then take action on. So yes, reporting is a great use case. Most of the reports we're running happen tend to happen before 8 a.m. So when work when the staff come in, they have the information available and they start the day by taking action on it. We've got one more question being typed in. I know we're at 29 minutes. So I'm just going to give it a second to go. And it looks like I'm not sure if you can see that question, Raj, and I can't see that question. Yeah, I can. So uh, the question I is, is RPA a threat to jobs? Is that a myth or reality? Uh, I can take that if you want from an answer standpoint. Um, you know, look, at the end of the day, automation is about improving business processes, yeah. and helping organizations grow strategically. Um, this question has been there since IT started to uh, 
uh, help business processes back in the 70s and 80s as computers started to come in. So no, it's it's a myth because at the end of the day, what we're really looking to do is help uh, workers become more efficient, have processes become more efficient so that we can continue to grow. As businesses continue to strategically grow, uh, they're going to need more and more manpower to handle different things. So uh, automation is simply augmenting the resources and not necessarily taking away the jobs. Um, how we deploy those roles and how we you know, deploy our resources, uh, those roles will continue to evolve and change as automation uh, handles some of the more repetitive or mundane activities like Nish has mentioned in their thing. So hopefully that answers your question there. Any other questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Uh, I know we're running out of time at this point um, and uh, Nish doesn't look like there's any more questions at the moment. Brilliant. Okay. I hope, uh, I hope everyone's had a, uh, found today useful. Apologies for the audio problems there. I'm going to apologize to Rajan one more time because uh, I did not mean to talk over him. I think I was. Um, but thank you all for making the time today. We'll let you go because obviously we promised that this was a uh, this is going to be a bite sized session. Hopefully you've all found it useful. You can see our contact details here on the page. Um, but we do look forward to speaking to you all again. Thank you for making the time. Thank you, everyone. Take care.